My name is Diane. Um, I'm on the Chaos Platform team, and I'll be talking about Chaos Engineering here at Uber and what that looks like for us. So we kind of gave a lot of the context to the, the complicated nature of our distributed systems here at Uber. If we're thinking about what happens in the life of the trip, there's a lot of things that are going on that could cause a really great or really awful experience. For example, we have services that are doing our persistent trip tracking, the routing and logistics, mapping, the actual marketplace of matching you to a driver or a driver to you, the payment processing, telecommunication, so connecting with your driver when you can't find each other, uh, data warehousing and modeling, surge calculation, our favorite, security, fraud detection, and then internal tooling for city operations like the studio app that Shiva had showed us for manual testing. And then where we sit, developer tools and libraries that kind of help contribute to a larger ecosystem of things that work well. And then the mobile apps themselves, so Uber app, Uber Eats, um, anything like that. And that all translates um, all together to over 5 billion trips to date in over 600 sit, uh, six cities. So you can imagine that there are hundreds and thousands of trips being taken every minute um, or every hour all around the world. And all together, it kind of looks like this. So using our open source tracing tool called Jaeger, this is just like the call graph of all the different 4,000 microservices that are calling to each other. And so as you can see, like the bigger nodes are services that are called a lot more often and then like uh, where these uh, calls are being traced from. And so when you're trying to think of a reliable experience, like how do we guarantee or provide a really great sort of trip experience, given the fact that there are 4,000 microservices that should be playing very nicely together every minute. And so how we do that is by following kind of the principles of chaos engineering. And so for those who don't know, chaos engineering is the discipline of experimenting on your distributed system in order to build confidence in its abilities to withstand kind of the turbulent conditions of production especially in the real world where you don't have control over like, let's say a data center going down or like a power outage causing a lot of different types of failures. Or, you know, you don't have control over someone else's service. So you don't know what would happen if that went away. So as you can see, like all these sources come from the principles of chaos.org website, but there's a lot of different parts in how we will run chaos engineering here at Uber. So first, we build the hypothesis around steady state behavior for your service. So using monitor, monitoring, we want to know like how exactly is our service operating on a regular day-to-day -day experience and what that looks like. And then you want to create sort of different scenarios of very real world events of like what could happen to that service in the event of a failure. So let's say data center failover or just like downstream or upstream dependencies being unavailable, things like network disruptions, um, network latencies. And then you wanna run these experiments in production. We'll run the experiments and then we'll like observe the effects of what happens to our, the steady state of that behavior. And we want to be able to see, you know, how, how we will improve our service and its robustness, or if like nothing happened at all. Then we wanna automate these experiments to run continuously. So it's not like a surprise the next time it happens and um, you know just ensure that we maintain that high availability and of course like during this kind of process we want to minimize the blast radius so no one wants to go in and say i want to kill like all of the hosts in my fleet like that doesn't sound like the best way to start off so you might want to you want to start small and increment as you go and increase that blast radius so why chaos engineering as you know, or from Shiva's talk, uh, chaos engineering or uh, resiliency testing is just one part of the story. So um, even if you have 100% like coverage of your unit test and do load or E2E tests, they're not sufficient enough, especially in like a huge distributed system to ensure the reliability of your service. Creating these failures continuously in production helps us as engineers to build systems and processes and like understand the assumptions that we make at different points of our service's life. So in the beginning, we might see that everything is fine, but as we scale, like how, did, how does that service change over time? And how can we like continue to promote that resiliency? Chaos engineering can also provide deeper insights into historic outages. So 
you might already be tracking like postmortems of what happens to your service. How can you recreate that scenario in a safe way so that you can understand why that outage happened and how you can prevent it in the future? So we've entire, we built a chaos platform that allows engineers to do just that uh, with the infrastructure and services in production and do it in a reproducible way and anticipate those failures. And I added this image of a fire alarm here just to kind of drive in this analogy of like how it is a drill. It's kind of like trying to do a fire drill for your own service, right? Like you have certain like assumptions of how things will react. Um, as a service owner, I would also expect that of my service. Like if I was to some sort of like kill scenario on one of my hosts, like things should just work out fine, right? But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes things change over time. Like, so we'll, I'll give a little bit of more scenarios of what that kind of looks like for uh, our services here. So our chaos platform is divided up in two major parts. The first part is controlled experiments that you run yourself. So you create your deliberate failures on your own like services or servers. And then you do this by defining the experiment or disruption that you're gonna do. This is done through a configuration file and using our own like DSL or the main specific language. This config file kind of lists all the different actions that you want to take. So let's say you just want to kill a service. That config file then gets peer reviewed by your team because you don't want to be just like running disruptions just willy nilly. You might want other people to know what you're doing just in case it causes like an alert to go off. This is also a great way to kind of track and um, reproduce the types of failures that you want to recreate. Then you can run this experiment immediately in staging or production and observe the results by looking at your dashboards, looking at your alerts. To give a brief architecture overview, a very simplistic one, here's you as the developer, and you're about to kind of launch this disruption using a command line tool that pulls down the config that you've already written or has been automated for you by another part of our service. We have a fleet of workers that kind of take uh, your request and it just parses the config file, knows which service you want to disrupt and sends that request over to an agent that is living on um, all the hosts. And that agent will actually do the disruption on the Linux kernel layer. And th throughout this, kind of life cycle. We have different updates that are coming through on the streaming RPC. So you're getting updates from the agent to the worker back to you and you can see the like real time results by observing your dashboards or just seeing kind of the updates that come through the command line. And then over here, like we store some logs of how that is happening. And we also store these uh, disruption reports. Um, at the end of the disruption, you get a report and we store that so you can see historically over time, like all the different disruptions that have been run against your service. So there are different types of actions or disruptions that you can take against your service and they're listed here. In your config file, you can start some process level disruptions like a sig send a sig kill, send int or sig term uh, to your service or like the container. Some CPU throttling, memory limiting, uh, network level failures includes delays, packet loss, and blocks. Um, and again, like this is all happening on the Linux kernel. So if I was this service, I have like an API server and a job server, and I want to test what happens when I do multiple things to my downstream and upstream dependencies. Um, I can create a configuration or a scenario in which I might delay inbound from this API client to my, my server, cause some packet loss outbound and see the results to this third party email sender that's my downstream dependency, or even just block or like read write to the database and see what happens. And you can do that all in tandem using our platform or you can do it just one by one. There's a lot of different types of configurations that you can do. So that was kind of at the service level. So if I was a service owner, like. I would maybe want to know things about what happens when I inject latency on a dependency that I have and observe those results. But since we are part of a huge ecosystem, we might want bigger, grander experiments, right, for our distributed system. So one of them can include a zone or data center migration. Um, and this is actually a challenge that we are experimenting with here at Uber. 
So the challenge is some services are moved from one zone or data center to another. And I wanna know what happens to my service performance with the increased latency and what happens when a lot of, the diff of, a lot of services get moved over from one data center to the other. So what are the cascading issues that also occur with that? So we can actually configure that. We can test and observe this using our Chaos Platform tool um, and simulate the added network latency for multiple services and then address and reiterate the things that uh, we observe. So we record these findings, fix performance issues, and then again, run it over time, multiple times. Okay, so I'm going to also demo our Chaos Platform tool. I'm actually not gonna run the like run a demo, but I'll run a recording of the demos that you can watch. But it will be against this uh, service that we call Punchbag. And as you can imagine, Punchbag is just like our dummy service. It's deployed in two data centers and instances of Punchbag just talk to itself. So Punchback 1 and Punchback 2, they're just pretty much mimicking reads and writes between the different instances on three different ports. And that's pretty much it. It's not like a service that will help you get a trip or it's not even part of like, it's not business critical. It's just something that people can test against. And so I'll just play it really quickly right now. So this is the punch bag dashboard where we're kind of monitoring, monitoring what's happening. And uh, this is it at its steady state um, and around 1449, I'm going to start a disruption that injects latency, 200 milliseconds of latency to the service. And we're just going to observe what happens for the next 30 seconds that this disruption is running. The monitoring dashboard is kind of slow, but as you can see, like things are starting to really happen to Punchbag. Like it's really struggling, making its read and writes. The latency is really high and being sustained. If I was a real service owner, or if you were the service owner for this service, like what would you do? Would this be a bad thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So fortunately, this is not like a real service, like this is not a real API that people are calling to do anything useful. But as you can imagine, like, if this was like my actual service running in production, hopefully I would have some alerts set up so that when the latency jumps like that, I could quickly be alerted and mitigate the problem. I would also try to like run this disruption multiple times to see if my service is still having the same issues when I'm just injecting that much latency over a small period of time. And then I might even like try to increase the latency, see what other effects happen and mitigate or like make changes to that service as well. So that was the first part of what we do with Chaos Platform. And essentially, because it's a controlled experiment, you can run that kind of disruption anytime you want as a service owner. Uh, you have the onus to do it yourself and run it. But our second part is called continuous chaos. And this is the part that we kind of control where we enforce a chaos simulation on a service at random. So services like business critical ones are automatically enrolled and opted in. And we get to do things like kill the service at random during business hours and see hopefully that, you know, they, ex they maintain a steady state without cascading failures. Obviously you can opt out if this is something that you're worried about, but in part, like we want people to be aware that you know, these things, these types of failures can happen at any time. So we like to opt people in. And we, cannot, we run these during business hours, but it's the business hours of that service owning team. So if a team is based out of Amsterdam or Lithuania or like New York, they can set kind of the range in which they want continuous chaos to run on. That way they're not gonna be alerted like at three in the morning just because we're awake doesn't mean they should be. So it's a nice, a nice little thing that we've added there. We've also added a feature that will roll back the service safely when, or the disruption when a monitored alert goes off. So you can add in your config file, like if these alerts are go off during this disruption, we'll just roll back immediately to a safe state. So what we're currently working on is we're still 
working on autom the automated onboarding for services. We already have most of that work done and have automated like the onboarding for a lot of different services. And we're just now like increasing the different types of scenarios that could be run at an automated cadence. And then we want to improve reporting and visibility. So as I mentioned, like we have a ton of data from running our experiments on multiple services and they can see that kind of data over time. But we want to also like provide services, different kinds of like scores for, you know, this many things or this many disruptions failed while you're running can get some sort of score that tells you what your resiliency is and also like improve reporting. So you know exactly like where things failed or how and why. Beyond, we want disruptions to be based on a dynamic call graph. So using a tracing tool like Jaeger can help us build really complex scenarios for your service. And then we also want to move to more disruption types, for example, rack failures, and think kind of beyond just at the service level or the zone level. More host types too. Like we want to be able to support people on different cloud providers and then hopefully open source the project. So instead of you just like actually watching just a video of our dashboards, like you could just take it and run with it um, on your own. So those are our plans. And maybe they're your plans too. These are, this is us. And then we are also hiring. So software engineers at various levels can apply here. You can talk to us. You can talk to, I, I guess, whoever works here. 